Hey everybody! We're here. We're live. I still think it's <laughs> funny just seeing us. Yeah, just it is. It's right there. Yeah. All right. Well, um, as always, since we are starting the uh, the live show, uh, just like you know, let us know if you can hear us um, and that sort of thing. Um, or if we sound uh, too far away, whatnot. Yeah. If we look fabulous or not fabulous, yeah, these, this look, is we feedback okay. we need. <laughs> we need that feedback. <laughs> um, and also, there uh, again, there is like a slight delay just because uh, there's a little bit of lag time. So between our real time and then what they see. It's because the way so, streaming works. That's the way that, streaming works. That's the way streaming works. I thought you said My streaming. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's the way screaming works, too. There's a little <laughs> lag between, yeah. All right, cool. Katie says, uh, we look fab and we sound good. So Most, most excellent. All right. Well, we will uh, take it away to uh, the host of this episode right here. You want to? You wanna... Hi, I'm the host. My name is Brandon. Um, three things about me you may not know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... Ready? In five, oh, four, three... <laughs> I thought you were going to go, hi everyone. I thought about what? it, but I was, I was okay. <laughs> hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Cosmos with Cosmos. I'm Brandon. I'm Liz. And I'm Mike. And today we're talking about the Big Bang. How big of a bang was it? It's a really big big bang. I mean, I I guess it formed the whole universe, so. So, so I've already been thinking about this for a few days now, reading into it more. and I just get confused because these numbers don't mean things. When you get that small and then that large within like half a second later, it's terrifying. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's so yeah. true. We'll get into that. Yeah, we're going to get into that. <laughs> uh, but first, we got to talk about what we're drinking. Uh, so, uh, Liz, what are you drinking? Uh, I <laughs> am drinking a cosmic smoothie. Cosmic nice. smoothie? Yes, it What's has uh, strawberries and uh, bananas and blueberries and chocolate protein powder and some ground flaxseed and milk and strawberry green yo- yogurt and no alcohol. No alcohol. No. Wait a minute. No alcohol. No alcohol. Oh, why's that? Because I'm recovering. <laughs> From fun last night. A lot of alcohol last night. A lot of alcohol night. last night. Uh, speaking of smoothies, I'm drinking white dielectric material, <laughs> more commonly referred to as bird shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, but I'm not actually drinking bird shit, just in case anyone was um, worried no. about that. It's false advertising. Yeah. It's also a smoothie, but there's Malibu rum in it, Ooh. so it's uh, delightful. The, the coconut rum? Coconut rum, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it, yeah. it tastes like summer and sunscreen. Summer and sunscreen. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. I don't I know like about it. the sunscreen part. Well, it, it smells so much like sunscreen and the beach and sand. Uh, this is a paid advertisement for Malibu right now. Um, <laughs> so if you want to feel like you're living on the beach, get yourself a Malibu rum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Malibu sent us money. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Mike? Um, I have rambling about the universe, uh, mm-hmm. an homage to um, Harlow Shapley, even mm-hmm. though he was wrong. <laughs> um, but basically, it has um, Malibu coconut rum, Malibu mango rum, Ooh. blood orange vodka, hey. triple sack. Holy shit balls. Wow. This is my Alabama slammer. Um, and it um, has Caribbean sunset. I had to get a big mug. <laughs> Damn. Holy you got fuck. Like, it's just like all the juice liqueurs in one. Yeah. You gotta, Delicious tropical universe juice. You're going to be singing Journey at you the end of this You've got the whole day. universe of liquors in there. <laughs> hey, look at you. Hey, I was, I was singing Black Flag last night. <laughs> more like yelling. That's true. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, as always, please uh, follow us on the Twitter. We are wait, at... Wait, 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 yo, hey, yeah, yozes. Oh, you got what, more? What about Jack? Oh, Jack. Sorry, Jack. Uh, Jack has a niece in blueberry hot cocoa. Oh, that sounds really wow. good. Sounds really I don't even know what the niece is, I don't, but it, I know it it's sounds a, flowery. It's like a, no, it's like oh. a, an er, uh, a, a, I don't know. I, words. I can picture it in my head, but, st- like, star anise. It's like a. You can't. 
describe what something is by calling it by the same name. What's a niece? Oh, you know, it's like an anise. God damn it. <laughs> like a spice. Like spice. A spice, there we go. Spice. Okay. A spice. Well, it sounds delightful. Yes, Whatever it, it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, now. now, feel free to uh, give us a follow on Twitter, at Drinking Cosmos, Instagram, Cosmos with Cosmos. You know, subscribe to the Apples, the YouTubes, the all the good stuff. What are you doing there? Oh, you're trying to point <laughs> down at Cosmos with Cosmos.com. <laughs> That was licorice. Oh, and Anissa's licorice. Oh. Oh, okay. That does sound delightful. You know, you learn new things. You on know the what show. I should have done? Gotten some licorice and eat, like you did when you kid, bite up the two ends oh, and use that as a straw. straw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. hate licorice. Mm-hmm. I do not like it. I can't live here. It makes good straws. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. The door's over there. We gotta get, <laughs> we gotta get through this episode. That's first. true. All right. So to get through the episode, we have some rules, of mm-hmm. course. Um. The rules being, if a puppy barks, take yourself a drink. Uh, we got the Amazon package earlier today, so we're set. We're good to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, we'll still get some shenanigans with dogs. Um, any Star Wars reference, take yourself a drink. And, of course, any Lord of the Rings reference, take a drink. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, so I think we're ready to jump into the Big Bang. Let's get banging. Let's get banging. <laughs> What what did we what should we first talk about about the Big Bang? Like, where did we begin? The beginning, or to start now and trace our way back? I, I, no, I say we we well, I guess it doesn't much matter, but um, so we just start at the beginning. Okay. okay. I guess really and truly, really we should start with the question: What is the Big Bang? Yeah, what is I the Big Bang? I guess that's a good point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, instead of just kind of jumping into it, and so, I mean, the Big Bang really is just the prevailing scientific. Theory. I'm going to use them using theory correctly here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, for the creation of the universe. So how the universe started, how it has evolved over the past 13.8 billion years, and um, I use I use uh, the word theory because it has been it has had a lot of things proven to be correct for mm-hmm. it. Doesn't mean there aren't a few issues, but. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of evidence that backs it up. So if there are, sorry, I'm not going to make a bad joke here. Um, if there are issues with the Big Bang, would you call that some kind of wrinkles in time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, some wrinkles in time there. All right. <laughs> um, but the Big Bang was not always the, um, no. uh, you know, the thought of how the universe but created. We, we've really known that for less than 100 years now. Yeah. Was yeah. it in the yeah. 60s even? Yeah, really and truly. I mean, it was, I mean, it's born out of Einstein's equations, general theory of relativity. And um, I think it was about five years after Einstein uh, came up with his equations, um, a Soviet guy, uh, Friedman, actually solved it for the universe and um, found that the universe, there is no static universe, which is what Einstein wanted, which was his lambda um now you say a static universe and neither that, expanding nor go. just mm-hmm. just existing yeah just exists um and friedman found that hey that can't happen um it's either going to expand or it's going to contract there is no you know static nothing moves um and um that was about five years 1922 ish and then um a few years later um a belgian a Belgian Catholic priest, mm-hmm. um, Lemaitre, came up with um, the exact same solution. Uh, but since he was not in Soviet Russia, uh, people were like, hey, this Lemaitre guy, he solved Einstein's equations mm-hmm. for, for the universe. Um, when it turned out he was about five years too late. But, uh, <laughs> you know, news didn't travel very well out of the Soviet no. Union at the time. But um, interestingly enough, a lot of physicists. Um, did not like um, uh, Lemaitre's solution because Lemaitre was a Catholic priest. Um, they thought that his solution was just a little too religious, hmm. um, okay. which is really quite ironic. Um, you know that the that the Catholic priest comes up with the Big Bang basically, and the physicists at the time were like, "No!" And nowadays, physicists are like, "Hey, Big Bang!" And all the religious people are like, "No!" Didn't happen that way. God went like that. 
Of course. Yeah. So. Yeah, and even the Big Bang name itself was kind of made in jest, too. Um, was, was it Gamow? Gamow? Fred Hoyle. Fred Hoyle. My mistake. Uh, was he just, like, joking about this idea, and he called it a Big Bang as, like, an offhand reference? And it kind of stuck? Yeah, he says he was not... He was not doing it in jest, but, but you know, I mean, I think everybody thinks that he that he was. Um, Fred Hoyle was uh, a big proponent of a competing theory or hypothesis um, at the time, which was called the steady state universe, which um, said that basically the universe was, you know, infinite and it is expanding, mm-hmm. and as it expands, matter gets created, um, and and mm-hmm. didn't get it start in this massive fiery explosion of space-time matter and energy. Um, and um, so he he was on a... It was either... I think it was a radio program at the time, and he was asked about it, and he called it the Big Bang. And um, thanks, Fred, because it, it stuck. Whereas yep. Big Bang, um, you know, it turned, went from hypothesis to theory, the steady state just kind of went away. Solved itself. Solved itself. <laughs> it didn't go out with a bang. No. No. No, what a whimper. But I, I, I love how the observational evidence of the Big Bang was found as well. Because uh, we had those hypotheses, those theories in the 20s, and mm-hmm. then people started to look for evidence of the Big Bang. Let me take my drink here. And, um, and then it eluded the physicists for a while. And then in the 60s, that's when this came about, there were two guys, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson. They were up at Bell Labs in somewhere in the Northeast area, mm-hmm. New England. And so they had this big, giant communications ante- antenna for Bell Lab. And they kept s- seeing this persistent hum in the background of everything they were getting. And it bothered them immensely. They took out the electronic components, replaced them. Um, they taped up all the cracks in the antenna just to make sure that nothing was seeping in. Uh, they went into the antenna and swept out a whole bunch of white dielectric material. That's what they called it in the paper. Uh, <laughs> so they cleaned up all the bird, bird shit out of there just to try to get this noise to go away. And finally, they kind of ran out of things they could try and fix. And so they called Princeton right down the road. And they go, okay, what, what, what is this we're, we're hearing? Do you have any ideas? And actually, this team at Princeton was trying to find... Uh, the cosmic microwave background, the evidence of the Big Bang. And he, the professor, you know, listened in, and he knew immediately what, what it was. And he hung up and he said, well, boys, we've been scooped. <laughs> <laughs> and so even though these two guys, Arnold and uh, Robert, they didn't actually know what they found. Like, professors, they tried to explain it to them, and they wrote papers about, you know, what they found and how they found it. Um, they didn't really understand what it was until the New York Times wrote about it. And even though like they didn't quite get it, they still won the Nobel Prize in physics just for finding it. Yeah, but Vera Rubin can't get the Nobel Prize. Yeah. Henrietta um, Levitt can't get the Nobel Prize for Cepheid variables. But, you know, we'll give it to two. Accidentally two stumbling on uh, Bell Lab uh, people. evidence of Big Bang. No, I mean, but... I'm not minimizing their discovery. That, that's pretty, <laughs> it is pretty damn cool. But it's just funny. Like, they didn't know what the, the depth of what they discovered. Yeah, yeah. yeah they didn't. Yeah. It's the afterglow of the Big Bang itself. Yes. It is the furthest back in time that we can see with light. Which is just so crazy to think about. Mm-hmm. The furthest back in time we can see. With light, yep. Yep. That, that is the wall. We cannot go any further than and how that. how far but back in time is that? 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Mm-hmm. After One third the Big Bang. of a million years after the Big Bang. Wow. Yep. And um, let's see. It goes by the ever um, sexy name of the recombination era. The recombination oh, okay. era. That's three hundred eighty thousand years since the Big yeah. Bang. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna try to take us all the way. So we kind of talk about how it was discovered, the theories. Let's go all the way back to t equals zero. Okay. So there is a singularity. A less of a dot that has everything ever. And it's not it's not like suspending in this blackness because it is everything. It can't. But it's not has no size. It's, the dimensions are weird. The singularities are crazy things. Um, but at some point for some reason somehow 
it begins to expand yeah. immensely fast, incredibly fast. Yeah, and we don't. Uh, so we're not saying that we know why it started to expand. Um, there are no physicists right now, save maybe some string theorists in their heads, as they might believe this. But no, no physicist really knows why the Big Bang started. They no. just know that it did. There are some great fun theories, which I'm sure we talk about later. But yeah, do you mean hypotheses? Hypotheses, yeah. yes, indeed. And so I mean, yeah, it's infinitely small. It's dense. It's this primeval fireball. And all of the forces of nature are combined into one. And you know what? We're used to, we, we, you know, you throw a rock off your roof and it falls. It falls because of gravity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you turn on a light switch. These electrons go through the circuit. That's electromagnetism. You have the weak nuclear force. So the, um, a nuclear fission with the, with the weak nuclear force. Holding atoms, holding nuclei together mm -hmm. is done by the strong nuclear force. So you have these four fundamental forces, and at that moment, they were a single force. They just won. Mm -hmm. They were one. One. Like the one ring. But not and, and everybody, the, 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 everybody. Oh, I didn't miss that. There we go. It was so. And s that force of gravity, the strong, weak nuclear force, they had to develop in an exact way. Like, if gravity was a little bit uh, weaker, for example, maybe stars couldn't form, or it's too strong, maybe the universe would never expand the way it has. Uh, same thing with the strong, weak nuclear forces. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if hydrogen didn't collide to the correct power level, we could have used up all the hydrogen much earlier in the universe. So everything fell into place exactly. Finely tuned. Finely tuned. For this universe. For this universe and for, of course, us to exist. Um, that, there are some fun thoughts we can get into there, uh, but we just don't know any better either because it's just the way it is. So of course it's the way it is. Yeah. And I, and I don't think... I, I, I think there are a lot of people who love to read into that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that it is intelligent design, the universe is fine-tuned, uh, fine-tunedly... Engineered, okay. designed the for watchmaker, us, which yeah. is yeah, and which is but, really. But at the same time, you know, if there were, for example, multiple big bangs, multiple universes, then at some point in an infinite amount, one of them's gonna pop up us just fine. So that's a, one of the theories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so t, t minus zero begins to expand. Yeah, and so like a little dash of luck sprinkled in, because really, <laughs> the universe makes its own luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, that, and by the way, the, um, so physicists and, well, astronomers and astrophysicists have broken up on um, this timeline into eras. Mm -hmm. And now when we think of eras, we think of these really long timelines. Geological, uh, time spans. epics, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you're going to find that for a lot of the eras in the beginning, these are very short time periods. Um, <laughs> exceedingly short time periods. So short, our mind cannot even begin to fathom to understand time that short no no so, so let's talk about that <laughs> so the the second era is called the Planck time which is um, one uh, times 10 to the minus 43 seconds so that was one million trillion trillion trillionths of a, of a second. second yep Whew. yeah so that's fast. Um, you know that that's how I that's how I break up time. That's how I that's how I organize my day, and I, I do it in Planck times. Um, yeah. So, so basically, all right. So now at the now we can start talking about how hot is is the is the universe. So the universe at this point is one hundred and eighty trillion trillion million degrees. One hundred eighty million trillion trillion degrees. Okay. That is insane. That's real that hot. is 1.8 times 10 to the 32. It's warm. Just okay. a tad, yeah. Okay. I mean, at that temperature, like, I don't think it means anything. <laughs> I mean, of course, it means lots no, of things. No. But it, it's, it, it means a lot to the no, universe. There's yeah. no reference point for no. us yeah. to understand what it means, you know. It's, it's, just, just, it's, just, it's just like, ah, oh, it's hot. Just a balmy billion degrees. <laughs> and like... Living in Phoenix during the summertime. Hey. hey. 
Um, yeah, so this is the closest that, um, that physics, as we currently understand it, can get to the Big Bang. As we currently understand it. Yeah, so this, is, this is the barrier based on what we know and understand about the universe. Now, we, and there's, I mean, sure, I mean, but underneath a second, it's still a little bit iffy, but, but we definitely can go no further than this. Okay. I was what, gonna ask why. What? But that's yeah. A good what, question. what? Do we need new physics to understand further yes, back? Yeah, you need fancy because physics. in the beginning, in the beginning, um, gravity was married to the, the other forces: mm -hmm. electromagnetism, strong and weak forces. Um, our equations right now can marry three of them. They can marry electromagnetism, right. can marry the weak force together with the okay. strong force, but we can't. And this has been the holy grail, really, for a hundred years. Einstein tried to do it, and it never worked. And the string theorists are now probably, let's just be honest, the closest to being able to do this. Um, it's called quantum gravity, and um, and it will be a quote-unquote equation it's going to be multiple equations but it's going to be an equation that how many numbers will be in this equation or is it all 42 lines? equation units and I, numbers i know they're having a difficult time figuring this out but have they tried carrying the two because that, that, that sometimes got me so i could see how that could strip up of scientists i don't think so I th I'll, okay. you know what i'll call brian gearing up <laughs> say hey dude you know maybe if you do this all right, so we're we're still at one million trillion trillion trillions of a second. Yeah, and if we um, if we go forward a little bit in time, we have um, what's called the Grand Unification Era, which is from uh, ten to the minus forty three seconds to ten to the minus thirty six seconds. Um, the universe, by the way, is one thousand eight hundred trillion trillion degrees at this point. Okay, and um, this is when the force of gravity separates. It separates from the other forces. Um, so this is the first... Go your own way. <laughs> Go your own way. That's what gravity was doing. <laughs> yeah. um, this is the... Uh, yeah, the first separation uh, of the forces um, oh. to occur. So gravity was the first to do it. And then, after that, we have a pretty interesting thing. We don't... Oh, this is the interesting thing. Okay. This, just this one. Yeah, like, I mean, all oh, this is really cool <laughs> shit, but... Something uh, more interesting happens? Well, this is something that, like, um, we truly, um, and I, I say this as if I'm involved in this conversation. Um, astrophysicists don't understand what caused it. They just have a really good that. idea that, that it happened. Love that. Kind of like the Big Bang itself. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is when um, you have... Um, Inflation. This is the inflation era, um, and it happens within um, ten to the minus thirty-six to ten minus thirty-two seconds. So this is this. These seconds are all just kind of meaningless wow. at this point. I mean, this is yeah. all of this is happening just yeah, just like that. Video. I have like, so many questions that physics can't answer. Faster than I, it takes me to snap my fingers. You could do yeah. This happens a trillion trillion times in the snap of a finger. <laughs> Yeah, and um, basically the strong force now separates um, from the other forces, and um, the the universe undergoes this really rapid um, expansion, and um, and it expands. Um, the linear dimensions um, increase in a small fraction of a second by a factor of about ten to the twenty six. That's a big ass fucking number. Yeah. Um, the universe goes from basically minus uh, ten to the minus thirty five meters, so really, really infinitesimal, to four inches. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So I guess the size universe of was a. That's, the size of a great. So, that's so the universe was really a grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but yet. think about that. <laughs> at 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 ten to the minus thirty two like, seconds. It's just like Yep. But it has major implications. Absolutely. Major implications for the for the universe. Basically, um, when when you look at the cosmic background radiation, you're looking at the effect of the inflation yeah. era. 
Wow. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's an amazing thing. So, um, the universe is a hot, dense quark gluon plasma. Wait, 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 wait. S- say that again, but in like a physics voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is the physics, physics voice? I don't, I don't know, but put your, glass, <laughs> put your glasses on and do the whole thing. But then I can't read it. Oh, well then. <laughs> That's well, then re- re- look at it and then take your glasses off slowly as a muon gluon soup. The universe. A dense quark gluon soup of the universe, yeah. Ah, uh, no. All right. It's in chills, right? Next yeah. time you gotta look at the camera while you do it. I'm looking at okay, I, I, I like it. Okay, I, I, I liked it when he looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it becomes uh, distributed thinly across the universe. In a universe. Then it's only the size of a fucking grapefruit. grapefruit. But there's no context for size, so at that point it's still technically, I guess, infinitely small and large still. Which is weird. Yeah, Because it's not expanding into anything. It's just expanding. Yeah, it's creating space as it goes. There's nothing. It's not not a black void or a white void. It's nothing, which blows my mind. Yeah, so when I was... um, And I really should look this term up. I really should, but... um, when uh, I was taking my um, first astronomy class, um, yeah, my very first one in college. Um, that was with Galileo. Yep. <laughs> Fuck Galileo. I, I, I taught Galileo everything he knew. Nope. I was with Kepler. We're good. <laughs> um, I almost pulled a Davison. <laughs> I mean, I am what I am. Um, anyway, he... He was asked a question. This is the lab guy. Though. Okay. And he was, he was, is probably as old as the ancient Greeks, but um, he was asked the question, what is the universe expanding into? And he said, um, well, the Greeks or somebody thought it was, they called it Ultima Thule. Ultima Thule. Oh, yeah, that's, uh huh. And it's just outside of the universe and the universe is kind of expanding into it. Of course, you know. Mm. Yeah, that was like the uh, the uh, of a higher <clears throat> dimension, essentially. Ultimate Thule is and yeah. like basically paradise. Um, uh, Show mom asked, uh, "Is there no matter?" So maybe. Nope. There's really no matter at this point. Nothing matters at this point, mom. It's too hot. It's too hot. hot it's damn. all energy. It's all energy at this point. So. Oh, I can't. <gasps> pretty much, is all energy. It's all caffeine. <laughs> so shortly after this expansion, um, the electro weak era shows up. And, um, um, so strong nuclear force basically separates out, as I mentioned, but, uh, particle interactions create large numbers of exotic particles. So now we're getting some particles. Okay. So what's, what's that mean? What's exotic particles? Particles are, it is matter at this point. Um, and you get these things called W and Z bosons, Mm -hmm. which are, uh, they're, they're weak nuclear force carriers, um, bosons. More you like, can create... More like the... bozos, am I right? That's all I'm here for, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, the had Large Hadron Collider can create them. Um, you, need, you need high energy accelerators to create these particles. Um, also, the Higgs boson was created, and the Higgs field is basically, it slows these particles down, mm-hmm. prevents them from going to speed of light, and gives them mass. So all of my mass, fuck you, Higgsfield. It's your fault. God damn has it has nothing to do with me eating all this food. Damn it, Higgs. Fucking yeah. Higgs. Slowing me down. So we're still not at a second though. No. We... Like, yeah, what? How close to a second are we? Far, far. Away. All right. Well, here in the far, quark far quark era, when quarks are being made, we're we're still at. 10 to the minus 6 seconds. So we're getting close to Okay, we're getting there. Okay, okay. We're getting to uh, yeah, times yeah. I can imagine now. But so, at the same time, there is not, no time at that no, point. There's no time. Well, no, Wait, there is time. Is, okay. Yeah. 10 to the minus 6 seconds. There is time. Okay. Um, it's just... It's, it's a small time. Kind of me- it's very small time. It's small time. It's kind of meaningless to us. But, uh, but we're getting there. The universe has cooled down to 180 trillion degrees at this point. Oh, okay. So we we That's went from a temperate from a <laughs> from a balmy 180 million trillion trillion degrees all the way down so to um, 
180 trillion degrees. It's frigid. It's weather weather. Yeah. It is yeah. frigid. Yeah. It's chilly. Grab your puppy and cuddle because it's cold. So quarks are forming. Quarks are what are... So you have protons in the nuclei of atoms mm-hmm. and, and neutrons as well. Um, inside of those protons and neutrons, you have these little particles called quarks. And what I love about quarks is that they weren't named necessarily by a scientist or a yes. physicist thinking of a great name. It comes from a James Joyce book, um, Finnegan's Wake. Oh! <laughs> yeah, uh, I think they're in the pub doing a song, and quarks are mentioned, and so, so the, the scientists went back. Do you know the names? What's that? Do you know the names? I don't. Up. Down. Oh, up down quarks, yeah. Bottom, top, charm and strange. Charm and strange, that's right. So the best dwarfs oh names ever. Yeah. And so the, the quarks that are inside protons and neutrons, basically everything that we interact with are up up and down quarks. Up and down. <laughs> up and down. Up and down quarks. Up and down, up and down. That's pretty quirky. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so, thanks, James Joyce, for the one good thing you did. All right, so... When but, we... I'm sorry, hold on. Nobody's going to make a Star Trek reference? Quark? To Quark, yeah. I thought about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can't drink to it. I know, I'm going but... to. All right, well, at one second, we're finally at one second. One second to three we minutes. We made it. One second into the universe. This is called a lepton era, and this is when you have... Um, uh, basically, prior to the lepton era, you, you created all these um, things called hadrons, basically anything that has, you know, quarks in it. And um, there were hadrons and antihadrons. Most of them annihilated each other. Uh, but for some reason, don't know why, but for some reason, there was just a slight more hadrons. And that's a good thing because it allows us to be here Yay. and have this podcast. Um, I just I just realized um, something stupid in my head. Um, I just thought the Large Hadron Collider was called the Large Hadron Collider. <laughs> I, didn't, some dude. I didn't know hadrons were a thing, yeah. <laughs> or that I guess that's what they're colliding sometimes. But okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have learned something. All right, so then uh, leptons, uh, leptons form. Uh, leptons, leptons are things like electrons, mm-hmm. and um, it's uh, anti-electron, which is also called a positron. Um, they also did this little bit of a little annihilation dance, mm-hmm. and like with the hadrons, there was a slight more electrons and positrons, and so I, 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 again, a good thing. Uh, what? I have questions about. Dark matter, but I'll save that for the hangover. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, we'll get into all the extra weird shit in the hangover. After that, um, from three minutes to 20 minutes, uh, this is called a nucleosynth- nucleosynthesis era. And this is when the temperature basically falls to a point uh, where atomic nuclei can begin to form. Mm-hmm. And you, you kind of skipped over something important in my mind. You said three minutes to 20 minutes. Uh, within those first three minutes, 98% of all the elements were made. Yeah. So, in the time it makes to, oh, in the time it yeah. takes to make a sandwich, was hydrogen, 98% of everything was made. And some lithium. And, and a little, again, a little lithium. dash of lithium. A little yeah. dash. A little yeah. sprinkling yeah. of lithium so, in there. A little sprinkling of So, the Big Bang Theory says that you should have um, a certain amount of hydrogen mm-hmm. that's created in the Big Bang, that you should have a certain amount of helium, mm-hmm. um, that uh, you should have a certain amount of deuterium, which is uh, heavy, heavy hydrogen. hydrogen. Yep. Oh, I knew that hey, one. look at that. So when we think of hydrogen, you think of a single proton and an electron going around it. With deuterium, it is a proton and a neutron um, mm-hmm. inside the nucleus. Okay. Um, and that's what makes it heavy. But it still only has one proton, so it's called hydrogen. Um, you have a certain amount of helium that's created and a very small amount of lithium uh, that is created. Yay, Nirvana. I, I was thinking I was, the same I was thing. Singing, I was like, oh, I'm going to make a Nirvana reference. <laughs> yep. Um, and um, really, okay, so I had, I had the honor... Of working on a project at the um, Indiana University Cyclotron facility, and um, 
We actually did not use the cyclotron at all because oh. we were working on neutrons, and neutrons are not affected by ne magnetic fields because oh. they are neutral. Um, and basically we wanted to find out how long it takes for um, a free neutron, just kind of floating out in space, mm -hmm. hanging out by itself, how long for it to decay, uh, break apart mm -hmm. into um, a proton, an electron, and a neutrino. Um, and so, um, because that has definite implications for this nucleosynthesis era. Because you need those neutrons to combine to create things like lithium. Mm -hmm. And um, once those free neutrons go away, your, your nucleosynthesis era ends from the Big Bang. So 20 minutes puts a cap wow. at that. Um, at that. Um, Jack has uh, an odd thoughts. Um, he, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so when you get close to a black hole, then time dilates, mm -hmm. and will all the material in the universe packed in a wee little space, wouldn't ti the time dilation happen here too? Plong time might have seemed super short now. That time has relaxed a bit. That time might have seemed super short. Now that time has relaxed a bit. Oh, oh, yeah, I got oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got you. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, time's going to act quite differently at that point. Yeah. Um, As, so. Black holes, man. I, uh, All right, well, I'm not, I'm not going to go down well, that. I'm not going to go down that black rabbit hole. <laughs> Well, well, well. I, I don't. I don't think that's an odd thought at all. I mean, um, I mean, these these time links are based on kind of how we're seeing how we experience time now. But whether it is, you know, time diet, you know, time under the effects of a universal black hole, basically. I mean, you can kind of think of the universe as black hole, right? I and mean, at one point, the singularity. Yeah, and so. All that matter, I mean, all that energy is going. My, it's my, make my, time. my brain's wrinkling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 God, it's, it's, it melts your brain. Um, so, um, three minutes to, um, 240,000 years okay. after the, uh, Big Bang. Now, 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 oh, now really, 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 really quick, now. um, the last size reference we got was four inches. So where are we at at three oh, minutes? Let's yeah. yeah, get some size going on here, because this is cool. Much bigger. Much bigger. I couldn't find any references to the size. Oh. Yeah, I um, wanted to. Damn, I read it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, I, I think it was like a million billion miles within a couple minutes. Because it kept doubling in size every very quick. Um, so in a few minutes, it was already incredibly huge. So what's the what's the cosmic speed limit for things like me and you, in spacecraft? For us, we got we balls. got the speed of light. Speed of light. Mm -hmm. The universe is going faster than the speed of light. It's expanding because it's it's not necessarily moving. It's just the space between. It's expanding. It's weird. Yeah. So yeah, the the universe's expansion is not governed by that universal speed limit. If Fuck. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so basically uh, the photon era is, uh, so the universe is starting to cool, um, and um, it's basically filled with, you know, a plasma, hot atomic nuclei, electrons, and photons that are kind of bouncing. Veritable cosmic soup. Yeah, I was thinking, yes. I was thinking soupy. But something... Something happens about oh. 380,000 years <gasps> after the Big Bang. What happened? What happened? This is where the universe cools down to about 3,000 degrees. Oh, that's reasonable. Oh, that's not bad. I can imagine yeah. that. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking hot, but it's. I mean, it was Phoenix during the summertime, right? Um, second, okay, second, all right, I'm sorry. Second, it's 3,000 degrees Kelvin. It's 4,940 oh. <laughs> degrees oh, Fahrenheit. Oh, oh. That's, but still. But that's still. Yeah, I mean, the surface 5, of the sun degrees. is only 10,000 degrees, yeah. so, you know, that's fine. So not, not even as not hot as the surface of the sun, but this is when you can have um, atoms form. Yes. It's cool enough oh. to where electrons be, can be captured 
by the uh, the the nuclei mm -hmm. of an atom, and at this point, light and matter separate. Light goes its own way. It doesn't necessarily get caught up by an atom, and at that moment becomes a cosmic background radiation. Yes, the universe is 4,940 degrees at this point, but as it expands, it cools, That the wavelength of that light gets redshifted mm -hmm. out, and now we see it as a co cosmic background radiation. So there wasn't, really, there wasn't any light before that then? Cause there it was. was. Married, it was married to... No, no, there was. What it was doing was bouncing off of uh, electrons and, and, and protons, basically... It's just really big, confusing okay, okay, um, okay. game of pool where all these balls yeah. are flying all over the place and the protons are all... pinball analogy. Yeah, so they're slamming okay. into each other. They're bouncing off of each other. Um, but as soon as soon as a photon hits and a, uh, a proton, it imparts some of that energy to that proton. A proton goes flying off in one direction. Maybe it hits an electron and it goes flying off in another direction. But now... When the universe cools down to about 5,000 degrees, mm -hmm. these photons or light can now head out into the universe unencumbered until some dumb people, 13.8 billion years later, builds a little space uh, spacecraft or uses this antenna on the East Coast and like, hey, we're seeing this shit. That light has been going for 13.8 you know, 8 billion years. And you can see and hear that yourself. Yes. Um, yes. Of, of course, we don't well, have this ability anymore because no. we don't have bunny ears on the uh, TVs. Oh, but yeah. But if you do have that, you know, two to any channel were just static. And 1% of that static will be that leftover light from the Big, Big Bang. Bang. And then also, is it um, is. F F AM, AM radio? You can do this with as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so go to AM radio and just tune to any station because nothing's on AM anymore. And you're going to hear that, that static buzz. That's worth listening to. Yeah, right. You're going to hear that static buzz. Again, 1%, the Big Bang. Uh, yeah, which that's so where you're going to have to go listen to it now. Yeah, but yeah. Um, So you can never be bored with the radio when you <laughs> listen to the birth of the universe. I mean, but imagine that, though. That is really cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, you... I, as a kid, my you know my parents had the big box set of a TV, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, and it would have that static on it. Mm -hmm. And it, as a time, I didn't know that was no, the Big Bang. You were experiencing the Big Bang. I was experiencing the Big Bang, um, and it really it connects you to the beginning of the universe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or at least almost the beginning of the universe, right? But yeah, it, right, it, yeah. you you become connected um, to the beginning of the universe, and then. You know, was it um, Poltergeist kind of that scared the shit out of everybody with uh, static for a bit, but uh... and then Poltergeist too, they're back. <laughs> I never saw it. Oh, never saw it. All right, well we're gonna have to watch it. Okay. Got added to the list. <laughs> All right, so then now we started getting into you know longer time periods. So this to me is really kind of. Because I just never thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's mm -hmm. called the Dark Era um, of, of the universe. It goes from about 380,000 years to 150 million years. It doesn't mean that there's no light. Light is there. It's flying throughout the universe. It's just that no stars have been formed yet. Mm. And so um, it's this hazy... Um, universe filled with hydrogen and helium, a little bit of lithium, light going everywhere, but it's dark. So what's stopping the hydrogen atoms to coalescing and becoming a star? Well, you need a little bit of gravity. Ah, mm -hmm. gravity. And so this is, and you can see this in the cosmic background radiation. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the cosmic background radiation, um, you'll see uh, this nice map of blues and reds, basically. I love that map. Yeah. I oh, love yes, that yes. map. Um, and the reds are a little bit warmer. The blues are where the universe is just a little bit colder. Mm -hmm. The difference in temperature is really quite small, but it's just enough. It's big implications. Um, because in those redder, warmer areas, mm -hmm. that's where you have a little bit more matter. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little bit denser. Mm -hmm. And if it's denser, means you have more gravity. And it's able to attract, and since you have more gravity, you can attract more material. 
And over time, you know, as more material falls in, you get bigger, and you get more gravity, and you're able to attract even more gas. Yes. Eventually you get to a point where this big ball of hydrogen, uh, well, this time hydrogen with a little bit of helium in it, get the, the center of it gets so hot, hot enough to where you can slam hydrogen together four of them and it and it creates helium and at that moment the nuclear fusion furnace turns on mm. and that big ball of gas now becomes what we call a star and the universe lights up that's the, a that's a let there be light moment the right first there. generation of stars yeah or something. population three population three stars population three stars and then you have it gets even better and then yeah you can you imagine I, you know, we, we talked about superpowers the other day, and you talked about time travel. I, you being Liz. Liz talked about wanting her uh, time, uh, superpower to be time travel. I can get behind that, and I would want to go back and see the first star turning on. You, you died pretty quick. Ooh. No, but your, your, your superpower no, okay. is that you're protected. You can go back. Got it. So it's like dual cool superpowers. Cause, cause, yeah. Right, you're right. basically Deadpool. I mean, everywhere you go, you go time. time traveling in the past, you would die of something real fast. So you're protected. Yeah, but I mean, can you imagine? I mean, these. Not, not the not universe me. had a first star. It had a first star. And I would love... I never thought of that. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I never thought of that. I would love to go back in time and see that first star. Wow. Yeah, yeah. you might have had all these stars that turned on kind of pretty much right about the same time. But, but there was one, one that did it first. And still one. There was one that did it first. And, I mean, think about that. The universe is dark, and then all of a sudden, it lights up. Now, at that same point, there will be a last star someday as well. Yeah. Yeah, we should get to that later on. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there in another 16 yeah. hours, because we're, we're getting through those seconds, folks. Yeah, um, well, now we're, a couple of thousand, we're thousand basically million, 500 yeah. million years and onward. Those stars, um, all these stars get formed. They turn into, they collectively become galaxies. Mm. Um, and, then, um, and then there's this galaxy that formed um, 500 million years after the Big Bang. Now, now, now Mike... Uh, the universe is expanding, and we're coalescing into stars and galaxies. So why is the space between the stars expanding faster than the galaxies can form if it's expanding faster than light? Wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have stars forming, of course, and then as the stars form, they, they get more mass and they coalesce into galaxies. Now space is expanding. Space mm -hmm. between galaxies is expanding extraordinarily fast. So why is the space between the stars within the galaxy not also expanding and ripping galaxies apart? Oh, oh, I, I got you. Um, that, that's, well, you have gravity and you have yeah, matter. yeah you have gravity, gravity. You have matter that's holding yeah. everything yeah. kind of together. So yeah, and so when uh, yeah, so when the universe is created, mm -hmm. it's not just you know protons and electrons and all that kind of stuff. Um, other stuff is created like dark matter and dark energy. Mm -hmm. Dark energy, really not an influence at this point in the game at all. Um, dark matter is, however, and dark matter is really kind of the glue that's kind of keeping it um, all together. Um, but also, the thing is, is that, yes, space is expanding, and um, it's expanding right now. Why aren't we being ripped apart? Because right now, here, right where I'm sitting, space is not expanding really all that fast relative to me. But on the far reaches of the universe, though, it really is kicking way mm, out there. Okay. Um, and so that expansion is not ripping apart my, my atoms. And... Why is expansion different speeds, then? <laughs> Just asking the questions people want to hear. <laughs> well, actually, my mom had asked a question relating to uh, the uh, Big Bang that we can hear on the radio. Uh, and she says, What's making the sound? Um, what's making the sound is the um, radio. When you listen to the radio, you're basically listening to light. Um, mm -hmm. you're listening to radio waves, which is a form of light. Um, and, um, 
So the radio receiver picks up this light and turns it into it sound. Turns it into, yeah. Um, for you to enjoy whatever song that you want to enjoy, maybe something like I was my uh, Black Flags, My War. You know, maybe you want to listen to Kai Rizdal in Marketplace on NPR at six p.m. Well, uh, <laughs> as Jack has said, uh, the first star's name was Cher, and she lives in Hollywood now. This is, this is the, <laughs> that is the correct answer. Population Cher star. <laughs> um, but so the cause and background radiation is light. It's microwave, um, and so your your radio receivers is just turning it into yeah. It picks it up. What that what yeah. the sound of it? Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. So and microwave radiation is probably you know kind of on the very edge of what your radio receiver is designed to pick up, mm-hmm. but it'll pick, it'll pick it up. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah. So these galaxies form. And in one particular galaxy um, that formed, you know, 500 million years after the Big mm. Bang, 9 billion years after the Big Bang, a star formed in it. Is this a particular galaxy? Let's well, well, do his thing. Let's do his thing. Well, we did talk about it last week. <laughs> what was it? The Milky Way. Oh, yeah. that's what, where, When does the milk come in? <laughs> that's when Athena is ready to go. <laughs> Hera, sorry. Hera. Hera, 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 Hera. What did you? What did? How did you describe it? Or her teat? Her the teat. teat. Yes. Her teat. Um, <laughs> teat milk. Yeah. So, and then around this just average star, yellow star, our mm. a planet formed. Actually, a whole bunch uh, of them formed. Eight of them formed. Well, actually, well, more at the time. Well, actually, Liz. <laughs> More at the time. Yes. Because we had yes. to figure out what happened when worlds collide. Oh, yeah. And eventually a group of primates arose on that planet and figured out a way they, to was, understand the they universe. They encountered an obelisk. And then... <laughs> yeah, but you know, you and I were talking about this uh, this morning. And... In, Brandon and I were talking about this morning, but Liz and I have talked about this before. I just think it is the most amazing thing that our brains are able to figure this shit out. Mm -hmm. That we are able to go back in time. Mm. That we're able to time travel pretty much all the way, almost to the Big Bang itself. Not quite there, but we are one... I mean, what did you say? It was a million, million, trillion, trillion, trillion trillion of a second away from the beginning of the universe. That we're able to abstractly understand that. Yeah. I, I look at Leia, who who so desperately wants to come in this room and hang Le- out with Leia us. the dog. <laughs> yes. Um, and all she worries about is the food that she gets and what pets. love she's getting. The pets, yes. And that type of thing. But we're, we're able to figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. We're able to mm-hmm. figure out a way to see light... Shortly after the Big Bang, and and that's all we have to go off of studying is just light. It's not like there's a research paper written sixteen billion years ago. No, it's yeah. just light we are studying. That's also mind blowing. Yeah. So, um, sure. I think humanity needs to really gravitate. Um, I know, right? Uh, so I did there. Gravitate to the idea that we're able to understand these things mm-hmm. and stop trying to figure out ways of fucking killing each other and ways of being a fucking racist to somebody else or just a fucking bigot or just a fucking asshole. You know, we're able to figure out the universe. We're able to understand the universe. Why don't we concentrate on that instead of who cares what two people are doing in the bedroom who cares what color somebody is we all came from the same singularity folks we did well for how smart we are we just make uh, equally stupid decisions <laughs> that's true <laughs> so um yeah the big bang fucking awesome <sighs> well do we have a any wrapped up? I mean, that pretty sounds. That sounds up pretty well right there. A thoughts of the Big Bang. Yeah. Well, um, but wait. Did we ever actually answer how much bang is in the Big Bang? A lot. A lot. There of were bang. forty-two bang units. Everything, everything that's ever banged was in the Big Bang. 
That is true. That is true. <laughs> Everything that ever has or ever will bang. Because isn't it more just like a, it's a, a big expansion? What? It's a big expansion. It is a big expansion. Now, I, I'm kind of interested in talking about, uh, probably in The Hangover, like, so we're expanding... So at some point in the night sky, we would no longer see other galaxies because they've expanded too far away. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be something neat to talk about. Yeah, yeah. We but did talk about that last hangover, yeah. but, but we'll keep it going. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, for, for, for obvious reasons. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, join us shortly for the hangover. Uh, do you have any uh, last thoughts here, Liz? I don't. I don't. I think that that sums up. Yeah, it's. it's I, I love the Big Bang. The Big it Bang blows my mind. It really does. Really I, I, I still love trying to think about the singularity because it's it's space itself. It's not in anything. It just exists. It's not expanding into anywhere or any time. It's creating as it goes, and my mind stops working. Yeah, it's not. It's incomprehensible. So yeah. yes, so far. So yet yes, All but right. still. All right, let's get to the hangover. Yeah, let's do the hangover. Thanks for joining us, folks. Um, we'll see you again in two weeks for the podcast. Or the hangover oh, in like you five know minutes. You know, what we're doing? you know what we're doing in two weeks? Tell them what we're doing in two weeks. Yeah, Liz, tell them what we're doing in two we weeks. We are giving you, our listeners, oh, a planetarium show. Planetarium show. What, wait, tipsy stars. Tipsy, tipsy stars. stars. Tipsy stars with Cosmos of Cosmos. Yeah. So join us for that... Um, for that planetarium show, we'll show you what's up in the night sky. Mm-hmm. Perfect. All right, but all right. for now, thanks for joining us. Uh, follow us on all the things, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. And Cheers. For those of you on YouTube, stick around. We're going to take a short, uh, a short break, uh, and then we will be back into the hangover. Hangover. So, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys in a minute. Cheers. God, I'm so glad they can't fucking hear me. I can still hear you. Oh, no.
Welcome back, motherfuckers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> so, we, we spent the last few minutes, of course, we filling my drink at least, and to, trying to figure out what we want to talk about, because there are so many different avenues to discuss about the Big Bang, the size of things, where we're at today, where we'll be at 20 billion years from now. So... We're going to kind of start you know, chronologically earlier on and talk mm -hmm, about mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. size of the universe. Like, like inches, centimeters, plank sizes, billions of miles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. I can't un understand, you know, non American metric systems. Uh, not, well, it's not metric. We use metric. Whatever they use over there. We use the, metric? With the, well, I don't know what we use with the kilometers. Are and you the... sure that's a regular smoothie? <laughs> This is just how I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, what I what I think is crazy is, like, so when you talk about, uh, when physicists talk about the Big Bang, and you talk about the inflation period and how mm -hmm. the universe just, you know, just crazily expanded. I mean, it just jumped in size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it jumped to a size to where you could hold it in your hand. Four inches across, so roughly. It, so again, it went from one million trillion trillion trillion. Oh, that's the second. It's the second, but still the same size. But yeah, I mean, two. you could you could equate that to meters at that point. Yeah. Two or inches, um, to four inches across. Something that you could hold in your hand, that you could cut open, uh, like a grapefruit. It's like a our mic, uh, you know. Yeah, well, kind of like actually, our mic. A little bit yeah. bigger. A little bigger. Yeah, a little bit bigger than I'm So basically thinking. about the size of Palantir is what we're saying. You can yeah. hold that in your hands. No. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. A plant here is it's bigger. It's like, that's like bowling it's ball not size. Even, it's, it's not bowling ball size. You're thinking about when Pippin, or Mary picked it up, um, but... It's, it's oh, I guess about, compared to yeah. hobbit hands and stuff. It's probably about five okay. inches, five or six inches across. Although, if you think yeah. about it, though, at least in when, the Peter uh, Jackson when version, uh, 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 Christopher so. Lee is, is putting his he's putting his hand over it, and I swear to God, that. only he can do his fingers. He has extra joints in his fingers to where he can do she love fingers. Anyway, Big Bang. Anyway, so how big is it now? <laughs> how big is the Big Bang now? How, how big is the universe <laughs> now? I guess it's the same. Thirteen point eight billion years later. How big is it? It was just going to be real big. 42 space units. <laughs> <laughs> it is 93 billion light years across. 93 billion light years. But due to the speed of light, we can't see all of that. No, that's no. the observable oh, that's universe. The observable. Oh, sorry, yeah. So, so when, the you, when, you see, when you see something, um, when you look at the most distant quasars that there quasars are. quasars on there, yeah. Um, sure, that light left that um, quasar 13.5 billion years ago, um, and it, it's taken that long to get here. The universe is expanding all during that time, and it has taken it from... Uh, it, it's taken it basically 93 billion light years away from us. We, we forgot to get a balloon. I, did, I had thought about that earlier. <laughs> um, there is that classic, uh, classical um, balloon mm -hmm, demonstration mm -hmm. for the expansion of the universe. You put these dots on the on on a balloon, and and you blow it up, and just pick a single dot. It doesn't much matter uh, mm -hmm. which one you pick. And if you look at all the dots that are around it, um, they as the balloon blows up, they move away. Um, the closer they are, they don't move away as fast. Mm -hmm. But the further they are, the faster they move away from that dot that you're concentrating on. Mm -hmm. And if this was a quote-unquote um, perfect, uh, perfect balloon, and that you could re take all the air out, um, and it would deflate to where all the dots were on top of each other, and that's Ooh, the Big Bang. Okay, yeah. It's, it's a very simplistic view of the universe because it's a 2D right. view of it. But Be because the universe is not the shape of a balloon. Well, what shape is the universe? It's flat like the Earth. 
<laughs> Isn't it shaped like a Pringle, basically? Yeah, a Pringle? A Pringle? Oh, that's right. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, like a saddle. It's a horse yeah. saddle. Saddle, yeah. That's weird. A saddle How shape. thick is it? I mean, I 42 mean, universe <laughs> units. I don't. Okay. Oh. Hey, that thanks, Jack. Um, not to be crass, but a condom also works for that demo. Can you imagine just um, I don't even, a condom there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. At least this one's flavored. And, <laughs> and what are the dots on that condom? Oh, that's, man, you might you might want to get that condom checked. <laughs> it's got some got some venereal de- disease right there. It's got some VD, which SDIs, which the VDs also originated from the Big Bang. Yeah. So we all got yeah. Everything came from the Big Bang. Everything came from the Big Bang. I was making a joke though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bang so it. all right. So sh- four inches. Yeah. <laughs> I speaking, mean, speaking of condoms, four inches. <laughs> <laughs> so not the magnums. <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> these, these are the little ones. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome to the Hangover, folks. <laughs> you started it. I, I, Jack started it. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> All right. Um, That's a big question. So I guess if. Um, what? Yeah, it's a... Using air compress... Okay, okay, I get that. Um, Jack, what kind of school shows do you give, man? <laughs> this is... The best ones. Okay, kids. It's planetary. Everyone get out your condoms. <laughs> We're going to blow them up with, uh, with an air compressor and... Um, it's planetary you know, show and sex ed. And we're going to talk about the ribbings. Um, those are transitions. Now, my mom has a, a question. Uh... Anything about the universe that doesn't make sense in physics? Yes. How it started, um, that first million, trillion, trillion, trillionth of a second. Um, the first little bit we can't sense. explain with current physics. Yeah, so basically in physics you have, you have two, two pillars of physics, um, and these two, uh, these two dominating theories are really great at explaining the universe. Um, you have quantum physics, which is responsible for explaining the very, very tiny. So protons, electrons, how they interact, nuclear fusion, nuclear fission, um, Higgs bosons, and things like that. But then you also have um, the larger uh, universe that you have to contend with, and that's when general theory of relativity comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it explains black holes, the formation of, um, y- you know, how, like, the Big Bang itself and the, the expansion of the universe. And, um, and it, uh, okay, so it explains the large-scale structure of the mm-hmm. universe. Mm-hmm. Problem is, is these two theories which have a lot of evidence behind them to support them. In fact, the general theory of relativity has never had an experiment that it has failed. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't work well together. They don't talk to each uh, other. They're not at, friends. They're not they friends. They don't play. Wow. They're, they're not clicks. friends. They don't work together at all. You know what really bums me out? I went on a tangent in my head. We mentioned black holes. Um, Thank you for listening. <laughs> I listened up until that moment. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many things that physics doesn't know at this point. And, like, for example, inside the black hole is another big bang going on inside there. Are they mm-hmm. white holes? Things like that. Uh, what happens in the variety of scenarios that I we will probably never know in our lifetimes. That bumps me the fuck out. Okay, I'm, I am going to, I'm going to this up. hold on to the optimism oh. that... That we will understand it. Yeah, because I think about the progress we made in just a hundred years, even. So and, it, and that is that's that's what holds me. That's what holds me. Um, that gives me that optimism. I thought that, your wife would do that, but I guess. Well, <laughs> I had to hold her last night. It was <laughs> it was a long night. No, but that that is a good point, though. That just the, um, the uh, amounts of progress, knowledge, understandings of the universe we've made just in my lifetime. Yeah, he's like. The majority of what we understand about the universe 
we've only known for like less than a hundred years. Yeah, we got like, the we got mm-hmm. found, the foundations took a while to build. Yeah, but then I, like, I think, but then we just now have the ability to create the more experiments. fundamental understanding. Yes, yes. and fundamental. a more fundamental understanding is yes, yes. I mean, because we've been able to, um, you know, make predictions um, involving electromagnetism for you know hundreds of years at this point, and so. Um, but fundamentally, mm-hmm. we've only understood it really since the 1940s yeah. with electromagnetism, with the weak force, and that kind of stuff. But um, just, you know, on a fundamental level, yes, 115 I, years at this point. I love that quote. I'm sure you'll tell me who it was and when. But they said at the turn of the 20th century that physics is pretty much all wrapped up. We have everything. We have a couple of nicks and crannies ready to go, but it's basically done. We know everything. Yeah. And then... <laughs> yeah, so basically, so basically, before 1903, um, before Planck and and his equation, yeah, the the idea was that um, I think the quote was, uh, we're about ready to understand everything about uh, physics and the universe, mm-hmm. and now physics will be relegated to. Um, Biology, and I think that there where was where we're just classifying oh, things. Yeah. And I think it was actually Max Planck who who was told that by a professor, and he goes, "That's okay. I just kind of want to understand it a little better." And then goes on to, yeah, turn physics upside down. Yeah, and he did it. <laughs> he did okay. So he basically wanted to understand. He wanted to figure out. Um, he wanted to so light coming out of an oven. So if you have an oven um, heated to whatever temperature it is, and you drill a little hole in it. Um, you you study that light coming out, and you and you can measure the number of photons that you're getting um, at mm-hmm. at each wavelength, um, and you get this beautiful little curve, um, and and it's called the black body radiation. Black and he and he wanted to figure out um, an equation that would describe that curve, and so what he did was he introduced this little letter H that he. Uh, wanted to remove in the end. He wanted to remove it, and um, and he couldn't do it. It's an exceedingly small number. Um, it's something times ten to the minus forty three. That's where you get that minus forty three. Oh, okay. Um, and he couldn't remove it, even though it's not zero. If it was zero, the universe would be a classical world. It would be that clockmaker type um, world where you could just wind it up and you could predict everything. And you can also predict, you can look at, and this is what the universe is like now, and, you can look, and you'll know exactly what it was like at the Big Bang. Mm. You could go all the way back to time zero. But he couldn't remove that H. And it has major implications. Um, and so with, with, quant, with that, with that little letter H, all of a sudden physics can't become biology, at least not yet. Um... And then Einstein comes around with his relativity. And then Einstein comes around again 12 years later with general theory of relativity. And, and Give physics, me the old one, two right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> physics has been turned to upside down. But it's not just Einstein and Planck. Uh, oh. Planck. You have Niels Bohr, mm. who really fundamentally kind of understands you know, what's going on in, a, in an atom and the structure of the atom. Um, you, you have Heisenberg that, um, with his uncertainty principles, basically saying that you can never simultaneously know exactly, um, the, the energy of a particle and its position of a particle is, you can never understand, you 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 will never know it. One or the other. Yeah. You can know one or the other. But not both. But not both at the same what? time. Oh, what is that spook? Uh, is it spooky physics I'm thinking of, um, where they're 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 connect the particles of one sp- entanglement? Yeah, the spins in the opposite directions. Maybe switch one, the other one switches, and that happens even faster than light. Is that right? Like that connection happens instantaneous, regardless. Yeah, of position. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty instantaneous, and I don't I don't understand entanglement, so I'm not going to pretend that I do. Did you call it spooky physics? Yeah, it yeah, is, yeah. It is, it is sp- spooky spooky physics at a distance. Oh. So it's an actual thing. I'm not just dumb. That's fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's so you have fun. entanglement. So if you if you have and it can be particles, um, it can be photons, um, and so if you let's say you have electrons, okay, that are entangled, mm-hmm. and one's here on the Earth, mm-hmm. and one is halfway across the universe. What? 
Oh, one oh, electron's oh. here okay. on Earth. No, I heard you. I just okay. okay. Halfway across the universe. And they are in, they are an entangled pair. Um, and you and you flip the spin. You're talking about spin. So yeah. you flip the spin of one electron. Immediately, the one across the halfway across the universe flips as well. So that must mean there's some. In my mind, this clearly must mean there are some alternate dimensions going on there where the communication is weird and instantaneous. So and so I love it. There's some wibbly wobbly tiny wibbly wobbly. Stuff, yeah, the so whole universe is cockeyed and extremely <laughs> weird. weird. <laughs> spooky physics at a distance. Uh, Katie says all physics is spooky to her, and I'm with you. I'm with you, Katie. There's so yeah, much but, we don't know, uh, and it's yeah, exciting. Yeah, it's, there's a lot we don't know. We, th there was uh, there was a headline in the you know art, uh, articles websites and uh, science magazines this week saying you know new physics may be just ahead because they were they had some experiments going on, and so like every year there are some kind of headlines kind of saying the same thing we're so close to new physics is this the breakthrough that's going to open everything up and go expand our horizons it's an exciting time it, yeah, it really is, because um, we now have the technology to start exploring some of these crazy-ass things um, in the universe. Mm -hmm. And in the article I was reading, um, Brandon was referring to this the Muon experiment yeah. that the Fermilab um, announced this week. Um, um, I, I did, for some reason, I had just have never thought about this, but... There's going to be a successor to the Large Hadron Collider. Um, I just never thought about it's it. It's going to be the, so fucking big. Because the Large Hadron Collider is the essence of big big physics, and but it's not big enough. But it's not big are, enough. Are yeah. they making the second one? Or? They're going to make a yeah. It's going to be oh, bigger, and it's going to be more powerful. So you're yes. you're going to you're going to be able to increase the energies. That you get out of it, and so you're able to get got that much closer. I just got fucking it's chills. <laughs> and you're able to get that much closer to the Big Bang itself. How big is it going to be? Because because that I don't know. The Large Hadron is already like straddling two countries, countries. Two borders. Countries, yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, we could have had that here in America, but mm. we could have had in down. Texas. Texas, okay. but we shut it down in the eighties. It 80s. was. It was a nineties, early nineties. It was early nineties. It was it was fucking Bill and Clinton. Unfortunately, we were still in the Cold War race with the technology and scientific, and, and so when the Soviet Union shut down, they said, "Well, we just have a giant hole now in Texas. Let's not pursue science anymore." And <laughs> um, scientific funding cratered. In fact, uh, Biden mentioned this uh, about a week ago or two, uh, saying like in the uh, World War Two. Uh, scientific input that funding uh, in our national budget was like six seven percent of the budget was just finding out about science and that gave us our modern world today but today it's at like 0.03 percent of the budget so we're just coasting on the discoveries you made in the second half of the 20th century yeah. we're coasting yeah and you know it's there's a certain political party that does not want, does not believe in science, does not want to believe in science, and that seems to find their quote unquote morals when it comes to, hey, we got to balance the budget every time a Democrat is in the White House. Um, but they don't want to put money into science. They want to put money into building bombs, which we um, can do because of fucking science anyway. <laughs> But they don't want to put money into science because the science, obviously, they're going, they think is going to right. disprove their now, new god. This is again a, a, a rapid black hole we can dive into. <laughs> so I'm going to take us out a little okay. bit. I'm going to take us out. I'm a moderator, man. I know, so that's why I'm doing this. I just live here. <laughs> take us out. Us escape the black and hole. we talked about our observable universe mm -hmm. thanks to the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's let's push it forward a little bit. Okay. Uh, what's going to happen at the very end? Does the universe like? collapse due to gravity Ooh, does it die out in a slow cold death you know mm -hmm. the whole fire versus ice thing going well, on mike has thoughts yeah well you know prior to 1998 mm. um there was um one of two things that would happen um it would the expansion would would um either stop mm -hmm. and collapse in on itself um, in what would be called the the big, big crunch. crunch, the big crunch, crunch bar. Oh um, man, so, somebody tell Taco Bell. I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> the big gordita crunch. <laughs> uh, or it would just expand forever. 
um, basically. Um, and so those were two ideas. So then um, the evolution of uh, the discovery of dark energy occurred. Ooh. So we are now living in an epic. What is it? We don't know. And it was just discovered in our lifetimes. Yep. Love it. <laughs> and dark matter was discovered, well, it was, it was thought of prior, but it was um, actually dis- shown yeah, um, yeah. in Verified. my lifetime, verified in my lifetime, with Vera Rubin. Give her the Nobel Prize, even though she is no longer with us. Um, thank you. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so... So we discovered dark energy in 1998 with the Hubble Space Telescope and various um, projects that were going on. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, wow. So the universe now is accelerating um, as it expands. So the expansion continues, but it's accelerating. Yes, yes. Um, Well, that pretty much takes the big crunch off the table. (laughs) Yes. Um, So that's not going to happen. But we, we, so now the question becomes what happens to the universe? And so... Um, there's, there's two thoughts. One thought is that the universe is just going to expand. It's just going to do that forever and basically experiences heat death. Mm -hmm. Um, basically what happens is the universe is going to expand, um, and all the stars are going to use up their fuel. There's no energy that's going to be created. Everything away from each other. And and in my mind, there's something like almost romantic about that idea though. And so the universe... (laughs) Kind of just fades. It flames out. If it, 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 no, it fades out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, what is it? Was it Devil Ever said it's better to? Um, uh, I don't know. Something. It's in their Pyromania song. Um, I don't know. You're talking to the wrong fade guy. Away. Take, a, take a photograph. No. It's Look at this photograph. No, that's it. <laughs> Every time it makes me laugh. But anyway, so in this scenario, uh, the universe will just kind of fade out. All the stars will. Um, you know, use up their fuel, they will um, stop producing energy, and everything fades away. But the other thing is called the big rip. And that acceleration becomes so severe that it just rips apart, uh, rips apart the universe, rips apart uh, atoms and quarks. All of this stuff gets ripped apart, which I think is kind of cool too. That's less romantic. That is, is, is more violent, but I also think it's kind of cool, too. But you know what, what's, what I think is really kind of cool, oh, or interesting, I should say, is that... Um, <laughs> yep. Well, I... You're a, smack, yeah. uh, you're a speck of dust on a moat of sunbeam, right? So... Yeah. You're a speck yeah. on a speck on a speck yeah, we're, on a yeah. speck. <laughs> but uh, it's amazing that we exist to experience it. So, so. let's drink. <laughs> so when we first were looking out, thousands of years ago when we were first looking out into the universe we were the center of the universe everything yeah. goes around us a hundred years ago there's this great debate is the Milky Way the only galaxy in the entire universe or are there these quote unquote island universes out and, there and in that debate it was also referenced you know is the sun in the center of the Milky Way as well yeah <laughs> yeah and so let's fast forward I don't know 65 billion years from now the universe well it's going to actually be much longer than that but eventually there's going to get to a point where all the galaxies will have moved so far away from us Mm -hmm. because of this accelerating expansion of the universe that we will never see them and (laughs) so if they have a great debate then the answer will not be no, there are other galaxies out there. Yeah. So we are there's the only going one. to be. We're the only. They don't one. have the yeah. observable evidence. And to like, like, otherwise. like we mentioned, there is a first share star. There was a first star that ignited and be, and, and uh-huh. lit the universe. Mm-hmm. There will be a time here in our Milky Way or the Melkdromeda Way, whatever you want to call no, it, then, no um, where the last visible universe will receive from our sights. And even further along the line, there will be a moment again where um, that last star in the sky goes out. And you have no light around you, so this night sky we have now, you would see, they over a long period of time, one star at a time would go off, not to be replaced again, but be have mm-hmm. blackness brought into its place, mm-hmm. and they would slowly go out over time. And so there will be an instance where that last flickering light to the universe is extinguished, and it's eternal darkness. 
Yeah. Love it. I think there would be anyone around to see it. Yeah, but you know what? Think about this. So let's say let's say they are an advanced civilization. We're we're gonna give them that this, doesn't okay? need a star to survive on whatever planet they live in because all the stars have gone out. Um, you would be alive though. No, let's Keep let's measures. say let's say they're using nuclear um, fission to um, create their energy. Okay. Advanced civilization. <laughs> yeah, advanced civilization. Eventually, that that nuclear fission material. Is going to run out, but they'll, they'll be able to survive for mm-hmm. a little bit. So they'll be able to watch their star go out and then freak the fuck out. But they'll be able to stay warm while they're freaking out until they can't stay warm, which will be depending on what material mm. they're using. You know, a short time relatively There's, speaking later. I, I mentioned this short story all the fucking time, so you're all gonna have to read it today. I'll read it today by okay. Isaac Asimov. Um, the billion name, billion names of God. And it kind of goes through that step of the lights going out in the sky. Oh, wow. So, the, yeah, I'll, I'll have to read that tonight. That's crazy to think about. Ooh, oh, it's so beautiful. It, I mean, it's visually, beautiful. if you think about it visually. Yeah, like, it, it's hauntingly yeah, beautiful. But, I mean, the time processes for this Oh, it's beyond c- comprehensible. It, yeah. It's just, it's I mean, it would take a long time for it to happen. Mm. I mean, by the time that last star goes out, I mean, you probably have so many stars. Okay. Yeah. That's you know, it could have been like the last star for like a billion years before it finally mm. goes out. Can you imagine somebody going around this star? Um, they're the last star. It hasn't gone out yet, but it's the only star that they see in their sky. Um, the gravity of the dark galaxy is still going to be there. Yeah. It's not oh. like this shit disappeared. It's just burnt out husks of former yeah. glory. So they understand themselves going around the sun because they've been able to figure out their Newtonian physics or whatever they want to call it Mm -hmm. on this planet. But they will have no idea understanding why their star is moving the way that it is moving. Because they can't see. In a larger universe because they don't see. It's not that light. Because everything is dark. I mean, they would need... It's like a black star. They would need... Basically, really big ass fucking radio telescopes to be able to see the dim glimmer of these star, these and dead stars that are basically cooling down. And that night sky would just be oppressing. It would be. Oh, just. It'd be black. very oppressing. Just black, okay. inky blackness. Okay, so that. Unless so well, they have a lot of light pollution, then it just looks like our sky. Yeah, and then of course there will be one last speck of intelligence to eventually Moving die in the universe through. as well. Say that again. There will be one last speck of intelligence. To die out before the energy is gone. It. Wow, that's, that's something <laughs> to think about now. Yeah, well, when, that's, that's when, a moment. When does the last intelligent life die out? Well, when Cher dies. The one Cher dies. Oh, or Dolly Parton, when she goes, we're oh, done. Oh, um, okay. Okay, so I'm going to take us back from the abyss. Because <laughs> I that, that, love that. Take, 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 take us back from the abyss. Uh, so we are our universe, but we are just one universe. There are other theories and postulations and hypotheses that there are other universes and other dimensions, possible possible evidence that we bumped into other universes. Mm. Um, so, is this a con? Would, would, do you think, just because we don't fucking know, that big bangs are happening all the time? Are they rare? Are there more than one universe? What like in your gut? What does your gut tell you? Or as um, Aragorn asked Gandalf, what does your heart tell you? <laughs> Because my heart tells me I want a plethora, a variety, an inimaginable amount of universes to exist. And we are just one of them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think multiple universes would be really cool. Yeah. You know? I agree with you. Multiple dimensions and universes and things that are just unimaginable out there. Yeah, each one tuned differently. Yeah, because physics would be slightly different. Yeah, which would be so. There would be maybe really cool. There'd be a trillion universes that life cannot exist because gravity was slightly too weak and everything dispersed, yeah. or a different universe where the weak electron, uh, weak nuclear force was actually too strong, so things can't exist there. Or the strong nuclear force was too weak. Yeah, but if there are also an infinite, infinite amount of universes, that will happen in an infinite amount of time, and therefore life could also exist in infinite amount of places in infinite amount of galaxies. Well. I mean, we all know life 
find some way. way. I yeah. say we drink to that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna have. It's, that's gonna start to become a new rule pretty soon here. <laughs> it's. It reminds me of that. What do you want to call it? Um, I'll just say a quote. Uh, you have an infinite amount of monkeys with an infinite amount of typewriters punching on the keys. Eventually, one of them will come up with a complete work of Shakespeare. Yeah. Oh, Here's the thing, though. Um, it's all philosophy. You can't. You cannot. But, well, no. All right. So <laughs> it's all philosophy. How 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 do you design an experiment to falsify the existence of multiverses? See, I don't think that's something you could falsify. I think it'll just be an ever increasing amount of experience, experiments to um, either uh, 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 approve, you know, make, make sure they're right. I was reading there. <laughs> It was the blurs. Yeah, so I, I, I think there will just be an infinite amount, infinite, uh, many amounts of experiments to cross off the list that you can never actually say for sure they don't exist. But we'll always be searching for them. I don't think there's one experiment. I, I'm also a stupid fucking person. I don't think there's one experiment to say for a fact multiple universes do not exist. Okay, so then how do you design an experiment? To prove that it does exist, it, the science has okay. to be falsifiable. It, it yes, cannot absolutely, be. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You have to follow right. the, the the scientific method. And right now, right now, nobody has devised an experiment to be able. Uh, the The closest we've yes, come yes, yes, is yes. to say, "Hey, let's look at the cosmic background radiation to see if there is evidence no, of yes. universes now, banging in each now, other." Now I, got, I got a quick story about which is that. more banging. I got, I got, a, I got a quick bang, story bang, about bang. that one. Uh, so when I was in college, um, I was uh, working on the newspaper and I was had a whole science section and things like that. And so they sent me to uh, North Carolina to do a Science uh, Science Rises of America conference. Mm -hmm. So I went in there to Chapel Hill, um, the whole North, North, South mm -hmm. Carolina, North Carolina? North Carolina? The North Carolina's research uh, yeah, the triangle. Yeah, the little triangle research mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And I, I listened to a lot of smart people talk. And one of them uh, was, I'm not sure if she was one of the like leading thinkers, mm -hmm. or she was at least part of the experiment. And she talked about seeing that cosmic uh, microwave background and searching for a cold spot uh, mm -hmm. where potentially another universe could have bumped into it. And this was yeah, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the idea, I had never thought about a potential universe bumping into ours and actually having it interact to a point where we can see it with evidence. Now, you can't prove it at this moment um, that that was, that close spots due to another universe fucking bumping into us. Right. Uh, so we'll still have to devise how to make that experiment. But at least there is that cold spot where one hypothesis because a universe bumped into our fucking universe. No, I I agree with that. I mean, yeah, you you can you can look at the cosmic background cosmic background radiation. Got it. Yeah. And see a cold thing. spot and um and you can say, hey, this is a spot where potentially a universe has bumped into us. I just I just don't think that you can, you you're gonna have to rule out every yes. single other uh -huh. possibility within our universe to explain that cold now, spot. Now, now, really quick, uh, the 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 CMB cosmic microwave background. If you look at it, it should be uniformly spread out. So you should see cold, cold, hot, homogeneous. Hot thing, homogeneous. That's that is the correct <laughs> scientific term. Thanks to fancy physics man. Homogeneous. But it's fucking Homo homogeneous. That that one spot says it's not, which is cool. Yeah, but it's temperature. Don't yeah but me. Just say it's cool. <laughs> it is cool. And say the potential implications are incredible. Oh, the uh, potential implications are incredible. And, um, I wish I had some popcorn. Okay. Right now. I, I believe there are other universes out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I believe we live in the, the universe is actually a collection of these multiverses. So we're like universe 616. Sure. According to the MCU. Yeah. Or universe of 42. I like that even exactly. better. <laughs> I just think that it's damned near impossible to prove the other other uh, other universes exist. Now, <coughs> excuse me, that's based on the physics that we know today. There we go. That's what I wanted to hear. <coughs> yeah. Now, um, string theory might provide us with um, new insights and uh, string theory really is the leading candidate right now um, for unifying gravity with really the quantum side of the universe 
and giving us a deeper and complete understanding of the universe. Um, once that shakes out, hopefully within my lifetime, nice. we'll, we will be able to say, hey, really and truly there are multiverses because string theory says there are. Mm -hmm. um, and there are quite a few of them. In fact, um, one, of, one of the ways in which they um, look at it is um, that our universe is what um, uh, is on what you call a brain. B-R-A-N-E is how it is um, spelled. And just think of them as just kind of sheets, just kind of hanging up um, like, like clothes on a, on a mm -hmm. clothes rack. And these these brains are kind of moving back and forth, and sometimes they run into each other and bounce off each other. But that that collision is enough to create a big bang and create another one. Oh yeah, which is uh, really kind of cool. So I'm I I I really I I really get excited when people talk about. I see evidence for two. Universes colliding in a cosmic background radiation. I get really excited for it because I really yeah. fucking want that. Uh -huh. um, however, the the science in me goes, you got you. Got, that's that's a big fucking claim right there, man. You got you. Have, yeah. You really are yeah. gonna have to well, break out. That's what we fucking thought about this Earth being in the center of the universe too. We needed big fucking evidence. It's fucking possible. Yeah, we just... But, well, I'm not but, saying the, it's not but evidence was much easier to gather at the time to prove that Earth was not in the center. Well, we also don't yeah. have the technology yet. Yes. And it all, it it all takes... You know, every time we advance our technology, we discover and learn more and more things. We have the better yeah. ability to. So, you know, we just don't have the technology yet. Yeah, I like that better. Brains are like slices of bread. Yeah. and mm. So... I was texting s somebody just as you were talking because you reminded me. God, you because know. Because, no, 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 no. <laughs> read it. Just just read that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was what, so I, the, the text was, was um, I am asking a friend it, the text to says, acquire watch. a show um, called The Elegant Universe with Brian Green from PBS because that was, I was. Oh, was great. I, was, I love it, yeah. love it, love it, love it. I was, you're going to hate this. I was 12 years old when I first saw it and that was my introduction to actual deep physics and hypotheses and these crazy ideas of universes colliding and it grabbed me so i still remember watching that for the first time and learning about quantum and string theory mm -hmm. and the idea that if i put my hand on the table for an infinite amount of time eventually it will pass through the table yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that i mean that is true and that, yeah that's the whole tunneling thing yeah so that's what i'm gonna watch tonight well, let's do it. Okay. I am so down for that. Yeah. So okay. it's called the Elegant Universe, and um, that was 20 years ago, so things have updated since then. Yeah, but, but it, it's still going to be It's still crazy. string theory, so it's still kind of crazy. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, Brian Green, uh, you bring up Brian Green. Brian Green actually has, uh, I believe it's like nine different ways of classifying a multiverse. Uh, and, and, and brains is, is one of those <sighs> ways. But um, um, I, I guess take into account randomness. Um, this is from Podmom. Um, I wish my mom was a Podmom. <laughs> she could be. My mom has never listened. So, um, take into account randomness. I, I'm not really, yeah, randomness to me is like a crucial element to the universe. It's the reason why we're here. But, but God does not play dice. <laughs> not only does he... Uh, uh, play dice. He sometimes doesn't even know where he fucking throws the dice. <laughs> <laughs> Einstein quote. And Niels Bohr. Actually, it's Niels oh, Bohr. Oh, Niels the, Bohr. The, the, back half of, the back half was his Niels Bohr quote. Oh, so, that's right, because it's back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, you know, in the 1920s, there's a really big debate. Niels Bohr on one side, Albert Einstein on the other. Which, which, which think for a second. Einstein versus these are monumental titans of just knowledge. So on, they're, on, on, they're both Einsteins. Sides. Yeah, they're they really both are. Einsteins, yeah. But Einstein made us look at the universe in a fundamentally different way. Mm. And, and Chills again. And that's why he gets the title mm -hmm. of Einstein. Of Einstein. Mm -hmm. um, but they had this big debate. Um, so quantum physics has this randomness to it. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, and the Schrodinger equation basically lays out all the myriad of possibilities of 
something happening in the quantum world. Mm-hmm. And and Einstein did not like this at all. He he did not like this probabilistic nature of the universe, the universe being built on probabilities and stuff like that. And so he's in, in a letter to Niels Bohr, he's like, God doesn't play dice. Um with the universe. Which is such a cool fucking statement, too. Yeah. Because cool, you have the yeah. weight of Einstein behind you, and just to dismiss this idea, uh-huh. God does not play dice. That is a yeah. legendary quote. Yeah, and so Niels Bohr, not one to back down, <laughs> responds to Einstein going, not only does God um, um, play dice, he doesn't know where the dice goes sometimes, and um, major paraphrase there, but um, it was just a complete rebut to Albert Einstein, um, and it really, I, I hate to say this, I truly hate to say this, because I love Albert Einstein to death. Um, thank you, Mom, for introducing me to Albert Einstein, by the way. Um, at this moment, Albert Einstein in the world of physics is irrelevant. Now, wow. now it is Niels Bohr, Schrodinger, Dirac, uh, all of these people. I have, a, I have a dumb question. Huh? I have a dumb question. You mentioned a name there I've not heard before. Paul Dirac. Yeah. Yeah, he, he gave a, um, uh, a way of, you know, computing quantum. Um, physics stuff and and there's who god and then another guy oh i can see his face he did the manhattan project but his name's escaping me um oppenheimer oppenheimer robert oppenheimer robert oppenheimer these guys come in and even richard feynman who Feynman's worked on shows up, who yeah. worked on the manhattan project uh-huh. himself played bongos and went to strip clubs um also not a great person but hey <laughs> and, uh, and figured out how the um how the space and shuttle I, Columbia although, blew up. Yeah, that's true. I do love Feynman di- diagrams, though. Yeah. I do love those. And so Einstein is now going down this road where he doesn't really believe in the quantum interpretation of the universe. And he wants to marry quantum with, with relativity, but he wants to do it in this what's called a d- deterministic or Newtonian kind mm-hmm. of way. Um, and it just ain't going to happen. Um, and, and in fact, he dies with yeah. equations on his blackboard. Oh wow! Trying to do this. Have you seen a picture of his desk? Because they, they, there's a famous picture of Einstein's desk um, after he, after he died. They just walked in there and didn't move anything. They just took a picture of it. It really looks it. it looks like an, the desk you'd imagine an old Einstein would have. Okay, just shit. Everywhere. Yeah, it's like just like, like a mad n- not quite mad scientist esque because he was disorganized anyway, but pretty close to it. It's a fascinating picture. I just strongly ch- suggest checking it out. And it, it, it's really sad that basically in the 1920s, after, after 1917, Einstein is irrelevant. Yeah, because he, he went hard after the grand unifying theory, uh, yeah. which even Einstein can't figure out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so after 1917, really the only things that happen for, um, for Einstein is that he... Um, Developed into a cultural icon? Well, okay. <laughs> Three things. <laughs> Three things happened to Einstein. He becomes his cultural icon, and it was the it was a total solar eclipse that did it for him. He became oh, yeah. a rock star after that. Mm. I love that story. But um, he um, asks he sends a letter and meets with President Roosevelt um, to start the Manhattan Project. Um, he did not want to have a nuclear bomb, but he knew that the Nazis would have right. it. Yeah, and so yeah. he, he asked for Roosevelt to start that project, but he did not actually work on the project. Um, but also he was asked to become the first prime minister of Israel, Israel and he right. declined it. Oh, wow. And that was more of like an honorary type thing yeah. they offered him. It wasn't necessarily, hey, come okay. around the country. Hey, be this a name. Like, yeah. like, be our George Washington yeah. type situation. Right, right. Uh, okay. It was a... Uh, yeah, but he became a rock star. Um, which which is great. I, I love the idea of having a scientist being a leading figure of your nation. And er, early 20th century America is just a 
fabulous, terrible place. Um, <laughs> like, like it is today. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but when you have figures like Einstein still alive and you can touch them and go talk to them and go listen to lectures mm-hmm. and they can influence national uh, discourse. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, so prior to COVID, I did travel a lot around the world. Mm-hmm. I've been to various countries and it's really kind of fun to look at their money and who yeah, money that. will tell you who they revere mm-hmm. on their money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's slowly changing. So um, <laughs> apparently in China, the only it's people they re- revere is Mao. Mao. Mm-hmm. He's on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you go to New Zealand, a physicist is on their money. If you go to Canada, Canada. Yeah. the ISS, uh, no, the the Canadian arm, that's on ISS, right? Yeah, like, Canada that makes amazing space arms. They, they are known for their fucking <laughs> space like arms. Space arm country No, the they're world. so fucking good with the arms. That's another spot. That's a different show. Yeah, and so they put that on their money. And okay. so it's it's interesting that, that you know, you go to New Zealand and you see a physicist that's on their cool. money. Not, not a dead white guy who had slaves. You see... A physicist mm-hmm. who who figured out that the nucleus was a compact fucking um, ball, and the electrons kind of went around it. Mm. So okay, let me let me ask both of you. I'm gonna start with Liz. Oh god. Okay. Maybe I'll start with Mike. Oh, All right, these ask your question. All right. If you could sit down with one physicist, one scientist of all time, and just kind of have a conversation or pick the brain or ask questions. Who would you select? Mm. Like you, you can go way back in time. You go back to Aristotle if you wanted to Plato, or you know Archimedes. They or, weren't uh, real scientists. Archimedes was a real scientist. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you, or you can fast forward today to you know sit down with Brian Greene if you wanted to, or mm. whomever. Mm. Mm. I, I. I mean, for can, me, does it have to be one? <laughs> for me and my. Um, a level of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. understanding you go with Sagan? and education in this. I actually think, oh yeah, Carl Sagan. He was an actual scientist too. He wasn't just a communicator. Yeah, maybe Carl Sagan then, because he can explain it to me. In a soothing, right, and understandable no, way. Because we don't have the mind. Yeah, I don't. We have don't that, have the mind. I don't have me the, and her the, truth, to, the, the yeah. educational background. We can't of talk and, and try to create some kind of new formula yeah, or create yeah. an advancement. We're just there for the holy like, shit. Look at you. Talk to me and just explain things to me in a way that makes sense in my brain. Yeah. Um, and also your motherfucking Carl Sagan. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> You know, I, I think for me, I oh God, it's so hard to pick yeah, one. Yeah, I'm, I'm it, trying to think too. It's so hard to pick one. I think I would go back and I would talk to Max Planck. Mm. And I, I would, uh, I mean, because I really want to know. Um, I'm like, okay, Max, you haven't released this paper yet. So you know, you know about your little letter, your little letter H. And you, you have to fundamentally understand what this means. What's going through your head right now? You're mm-hmm. about ready. Yeah. You're about ready to usher in mm-hmm. an entire. We we talk about new physics. This mm-hmm. muon discover. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not really a discovery. It is that the Fermi Lab has verified another lab's uh, discovery yeah. from 20 years ago, uh, with a little bit more um, uh, precision. And um, look up the muon G minus two. Um, experiment uh, for Fermi Lab, but Max Planck ushered in an entire new physics mm-hmm. that we yes. had we did not know about. Yeah, and there had to have been a moment when he finished that equation. The aha moment. The aha moment. Mm-hmm. He is not. Ta- he's the only person in the entire world at that moment 
who knows about quantum I physics. I love those thoughts. I, I, I love the idea of like when Voyager was doing its grand tour and sending pictures back, there was one person sitting at the computer or the printer and watching these images come in, and they are the first and only person in the yeah. history of humanity to see Saturn or Jupiter or Uranus that close. So Max Planck, he is the only person mm -hmm. to understand the physics at yeah, the time yeah. and all of history. Yeah. I love those moments. Yeah, and to yeah. realize also that right now, physics is not is not going to become bio biology. Holy where we're shit! Just classifying stuff. On the, like earth shattering moment mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also mm -hmm. let's go forward just a, 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 you know fifteen years um, um, to uh, Schwarzschild sitting on the oh. fucking <laughs> Western Front. <laughs> World War One is raging. Actually, I think he's on the Eastern Front. Um, and Schwarzschild on the front during World War One. That's a shitty place to be. Yeah. In a trench. It was not all quiet. No. In a trench. It was all miserable. He works out the equations for a black hole. Him and Tolkien. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's actually, it. yeah, they were both. Oh, a, oh man, they were both, they were both on the, on the fronts oh. there. They're different fronts. Yeah, and so he was the only one at that at that moment who had worked it out and truly understood this is a black this is the equation for a black hole. Or the first equations it. to say, hey, there's these things called gravitational waves. So, so I, do you think there will be? I'll, I'll answer the question as well. But do you think that there will be a single person or a team of people? that eventually find a grand unifying theory this team. and uh, the team and they sit on it for I don't know how many seconds or minutes or like holy shit we need to verify this but for that moment for that fleeting moment <laughs> they will be able to introduce a realm a new realm mm -hmm. of understanding of the cosmos okay I okay I need, I need to clarify this the, in physics I, I say team um, I, I, it, okay yeah um, in physics, you have two worlds. You have the theoretical world, and you have the experimental world. They both they both feed on each other. Right. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the experimental world leads the theoretical, and, and vice versa. Um, but then you also get those that are like Einstein and the theater theater theatric theatrical. No. The theory side of the world and theoretical, theoretical and theoretical. it pushes the experimental. But anyway. I think that um, on the theoretical side, it will be a team of yeah. people. A team of individuals. Uh, because as, as we've all learned in physics, you do stand on the shoulders of giants, mm -hmm. like Newton said. Right. And so, um, But then you need to start experimenting, confirming the yes. yes. And those are going to be made out of teams. But you are going to have maybe that one person that looks at the data, and for the briefest of a moment, before they have their, you know, their scientific talk for their group, Holy where they shit. know, where they figure the, the it. pieces fall into yes. place, and they look at it and they go, "This is the Higgs boson." Yes, it it, it has been it has been the, uh, you know they they've said it has to exist, but on this piece of paper, here's the proof. Nobody has fucking seen this. There is, here it is. there is that great uh, line in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where s some woman in like Middle British England figured out the points of light and as she ran it through in the head, ran across the street to tell people and, hit, and got hit by a car. Oh, <laughs> and it was yeah. lost. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I do think that's going to happen. And I think that the car part, though. it's going gonna, it's gonna to come from maybe not a li large hadron collider, but its it successor where the energies are big enough to where you can conduct these experiments, where the team leader is going to look at the data and go, this is it. And, you know, if it's not, if it's not one person, it's just a handful of people. You're talking about probably less than 50 people in the entire world. The fucking entire universe. universe. Well, no, I won't go that far. I won't go I, that far. I fucking will. Very there are 50 people. centric of you, Brandon. There are 50, let's say there's 50 people on this team. Mm -hmm. They're looking at this data for until the news conference. Jesus Christ. They understand exactly how the universe works. 
It's fucking mind blowing. It's like mm-hmm. creating fire for the first time, basically. Meanwhile, Holy meanwhile, shit. we're arguing about what are we gonna have for fucking din- dinner, or what, <laughs> what song do we want to play in this round robin song thing we're doing? Um, you know. Meanwhile, they have the universe figured out. What are we doing with our lives? Drinking. Making a podcast. Yeah, we're here. We're talk. We're talk. We're, we, we're talking about this shit for the people. We are loving. We're communicating. We are the loving the labors of those that pursue science yes. as their life. We are standing we're, on the shoulders of the giants. We're the PR people. We're for lounging. Science. We are lounging on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> lounging on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> Drinking fermented be- beverages. Uh-huh. Yes. And eating salted pork. Ah, salted oh, pork. Oh, drink, drink it up. I'm out of drink. I'll get more after this. All right. All right, so that was, and I love that conversation. Mm-hmm. That, that was good. great. Um, That's good. So oh, I don't think we can top that. Uh, so think about closing thoughts here. Um, I guess my closing thought will be about the scientist I would meet with. So I never gave. Oh any yeah, answer. you never answered uh-huh. your own question, uh-huh. which you never yeah, we do. We gave you plenty of time. I know. I, I know exactly who it would be. Um, Taco Brahi. <gasps> oh, because you just nice want to meet Jep, don't you? I do want to meet Jep. Uh, J- Jep. <laughs> was the dwarf that lived under Tycho Brahe's table, and it was fed scraps. Uh, but that's a different story. Okay. Uh, so with Tycho Brahe, uh, he, this was the, what, the 1600s at the time? Yeah, that's Six, like that. 1600s, 15, 15, 1500s. 1500s. Um, incredibly wealthy individual who owned a castle because he saved the king at a young age. It's a crazy story like that. Uh, but he understood the how to observe... Uh, the solar system and the planets. He wasn't great with the math, which mm-hmm. is why he brought Ty- uh, not Kepler. Tiger, Kepler, Kepi Keps. Kepson, uh, Kepler. And so I wouldn't want to meet Kepler because he's heavy on the math. But Tycho is great with the observation. And I know enough to have conversations with him, talk about mm-hmm. it. And then I could also oh, see you're missing this piece of data and blow his mind and just have these conversations back and forth while at the same time having a great feast because he loved parties. Uh, there you go. Yeah, he yeah. actually bequeathed all his data to Kepler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but he refused to actually work. He worked a little bit with Kepler during his life, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure if it was jealousy or what yeah, the credit. It, it he, was a power he, move. He withheld a lot of information. It was a power move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're missing the key point. He had a fucking metal nose. Metal nose. Oh, yeah. He did. He lost right. in a duel earlier. Uh, right. So I would love to have a conversation and a dinner and Brian's wine. Good. With Brian. Brian's a good one. Yeah. Sagan's a good, good one. Um, there's just so many. Uh, so many of you'd want to sit down. I, I would want to sit down with, like I said, um, Plonk, just for that brief moment. Or William and Caroline Herschel. I would love that. Because they are my people. Yeah, and and you know what? Vera Rubin. Yeah. Vera Rubin, because Vera Rubin, she was, she was given a project. Um, and this project was to just find out how fast stars are moving around the center of the Milky Way galaxy because it was seen as a a tame project a project in which nothing will come from it because she had a vagina and We're of dumb. course anybody who has a vagina must not make waves in world you can't think smart and what does Vera Rubin do um, she finds that um, dark matter exists. She didn't. She didn't come up with the idea of dark matter. That preceded her by many decades. However, oh, Marie Curie is actually a really good one. Oh, too. solid. Yeah. 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 But I, I wouldn't want to talk to her too closely. No, you gotta uh, because say you, that. You'd probably die pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Little... Her cookbook is still radioactive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, her husband was hit by a bus, right? Oh shit! I didn't know that. She. She. Uh, Marie Curie. Madame Curie is the only person. Uh, I believe, to have won a Nobel Prize in both chemistry and physics. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and she's female. If, if, uh, we can watch, fuck we, you, Nobel. We can watch her movie tonight. Yeah, she... Um, oh, my God, yeah. But, uh, like Brandon said, don't get too close. She's very <laughs> radioactive. I'm surprised you didn't mention uh, Zwicky, who'd be a terrible person to have dinner with, I think. But Oh, God, but... Oh, man. That'd just, be a lot of fun. I would love to meet with him just because he's just be so grumpy. He is the greatest <laughs> spherical bastard. <laughs> spherical well, bastards. Well done. Um, yeah, no. I As much as I like Fritz Wiki yeah, with his insane yeah. fucking ideas. Um, but he did donate lots of charity, so he wasn't all bad. And he, he was one of the first astronomers to proclaim the existence of dark matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He also said, hey, pulsars, 
heat. Uh, neutron yeah. stars, you know. Um, and then they were discovered later on. He also called his good colleague a Nazi. Um, so there's that. <laughs> he was not a Nazi. He, turns out. Yeah. he was very, <laughs> very he was an odd guy. He yeah. was um, tankerous. Good word. Tankers. I gotta send you that article. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so that that was my person. Any closing thoughts, Mr. Mike? Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I think, I we, think we got a lot of our talks out there. Yeah, the universe is an amazing place, and so just just take a moment. I know we have said this, um, you know, a lot in the forty episodes. I think this is like the fortieth or forty first episode that we've had. Um, go out at night. Just take a moment and just look up. You don't. You don't need a telescope. You don't need binoculars. You don't even need a great sky. Just see a no. couple of those twinkling lights yeah. out there and, and just imagine. connect with the universe. Yeah. And if you don't want to go outside, if it's you know cold, too cold or too windy, then just turn on the radio to an AM station. Mm-hmm. Rather go to listen static to and band. listen to the big bang. Listen to the whispers of the universe. Ooh, and cut. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us this week for Cosmos with Cosmos. Stay safe, stay warm, stay cold if you're in the hot spot. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see you in two weeks yeah. when we do a planetarium show, we'll which will be a, maybe a disaster or the greatest thing ever. And we'll find out. Tipsy stars. Tipsy Cosmos stars. Cosmos. All right. Cheers, everybody. Right. Bye, everybody. Thanks see, for joining us. See you, Pop Mom. <laughs> yeah. We'll see ya. Maybe. Or Maybe. we're still going to go because Liz can't figure out the yeah, controls. Yeah, it takes me a while to like stop everything because I don't know. There's just too much happening. But anyway, all right. All right, cheers.